Hey, hello, Noble Rick here. Today, let's make a baby out of polymer clay. Now, stay tuned. Tips and tricks at the end of the video to make this a more successful sculpt. I've got my three sculpt tools and my handy dandy knife and my clay. I'm making it into uh, this polymer clay into a cylindrical shape that allows me to uh, better eye the volume that I'm cutting it into. Here I got two equal shapes, cut the second half into about a third and a big part. The third's going to be the limbs, the big part is the belly, which I'm working on here. The other thing I used was pearls. <laughs> For the pearl I used a bead. It's a nightshade bead, dark bead. I sanded the beads for the eyes because I had to um, have the paint adhere to it. If it was too shiny, the paint peels off. So I sanded the beads down a bit. But not the one I used for the pearl, which you'll see later. Also, do not get into details too early. Here I'm doing the general shape of everything. I'm making the legs now. Making the feet. Now, unlike the other figure that I did previously, that one I was trying to see how fast I can make it. So I didn't make its ears and I made its toes with my knife. That is, uh, I just pressed the knife into the fit, the feet, to make the toes. Here I'm making the toes separate and just molding them on. I want to give a little more time to this figurine and give a little more detail to this cartoon baby. giving him five toes and uh, molding them on with the knife's blade. Later you'll see me use the scissors for that knife too. Comes in handy. What are these? More appendages. Arms. Baby arms. I'm basically rolling it with a small tool, rolling it away from me so that the bulb doesn't get pressed into it. Babies have uh, chubby arms that make creases at their elbows and other places sometimes on the arm. I felt like the hands had too much material here so I had to cut some of that away. First I did it with the blade but then I found that the scissors was pretty useful for this task. There's a pearl, which is a bead. I, of course, did not send this one. I wanted it to, it to be shiny. All right, let's make some more. What is this? If you look at a baby's hand, you will notice that, generally speaking, they are chubby little fingers that go down to almost a pointy little fingertip. Very adorable. So basically speaking, a baby's fingers are cones, cone shapes. So that's what I'm making here. And I'm applying them to the hand, using the knife again to mold them onto the hand, and using the ball, little ball, the little ball sculpt tool to uh, make dimples where the knuckles are. Now let's make some paint, or make some paint for the eyes. I chose a universal color, most uh, human eyes are brown, mostly, most of the time. I like using beads for eyes because you can use the toothpick to adjust where the eye looks, the direction the eye looks. I'm applying some darker color to the to the eyes. I didn't mix this paint. I did not mix this one. I had a little bit of light color go inside the uh, bead, so I wanted to fix that and also give it a pupil. I just adjust the pupil with my fingernail there. Here we have the uh, darker ring around the eye. You notice I spin the toothpick to help make that effect on the eye. It's another handy reason to use a toothpick. And you use a bead so you can put a toothpick in it. There, almost all together, holding the pearl. 
holding the nightshade pearl. Let's work on the face or the head. Here I felt that there was way too much material on the bottom. Had to move that to the top. Um, here, this doll did not have an equilateral triangle. Um, what I call the Miller triangle. It's a portraiture uh, help that I had discovered some time ago. I'm sure somebody else had discovered it before me. But I call it the Miller triangle. If you look at an eye in a face, the two eyes and the nose form an equilateral triangle. So it'll help you proportion things well whenever you're doing a portraiture. But this is a cartoon baby, so I kind of scrunched the face a little bit by making the nose closer to the eyes. So there's no equilateral, equilateral triangle here. All right, make an eyelids. Putting some more flesh around the eyes. Making the eyelids and the uh, flesh around the eyes. Egyo Sal here, or <laughs> the lower eyelids. Egyo Sal is a Korean term. I'm no, I'm mis must be mispronouncing it, but it basically means baby flesh, or the little plump of flesh underneath baby or young people's eyes. Very cute, very adorable. Egyo Sal. I'll orient the eyes looking a different direction later. Didn't. Uh, wanted to go that way. I had um, made a sketch of this first, but I kind of deviated away from the sketch, at least especially around the face, but eh, pretty much kept up with the uh, sketch. You may want to sketch your uh, figurines out first, help you uh, decide what you're going to do. That may save some uh, head head headache later down the line. You may want to make the mouth the same width, width as the nose. That's very cute. Again, the face is very scrunched up here. It's a nice cartoon baby face. Very cute. Had the face scrunched up. The eyes down low. The uh, nose close to the eyes line. And the mouth not too far below that. You may notice that the, the face on a baby my art teacher told me a long time ago when I was in high school is about down one third of the way you don't want to put your like an adult the eyes are in the middle line horizontal line of the head right down the middle of the head not so with a baby you want to go down below that line a little bit to put the eyes in and then the other features below that that makes a cute baby that way and that's what makes babies cute their facial features are low on the their face. Here I'm using um the the ball tool, the small doll to make the small ball to make the crease in the back of the ear. An ear is basically three shapes. This may help you to uh, draw and to sculpt an ear. An ear is basically a half circle stuck on the side of the head, and inside the half circle you bend the letter Y, little Y shape inside there which I'm molding now and of course um, the ear canal the third shape will be that door that kind of covers over that ear canal so there's three shapes to it in the ear the main shape is the half circle with a little letter Y bent inside of it curled up inside of it and below that a little door that barely covers the ear canal So it helps to have a fingernail. Take away material from the behind the ear. Alright, molding it a little bit more here. Oh, 
All right. Nautical theme, baby. Nautical accessory. Let's make that now. Got some navy blue polymer clay. I'm homogenizing it. I don't think I pronounced that correctly, but basically that means I'm making it consistent through and through and mixing it all up. Like homogenized milk. I still didn't say that right. Anywho, that's the uh, navy blue part. I put a light blue part on top of that. What accessory is this? Well, I'm making a navy style hat, but the style is like way back in time. Probably 1900s. Early 1920s, maybe? When they went out of style? So it's probably pre 1920s. A navy hat. Pushing the uh, navy color back a little bit, making it more like uh, a band of cloth. And uh, this style of hat has a ribbon, for lack of a better term, that hangs from it. A forked ribbon. Making the fork here, there we go. Kind of like a snake's tongue, sort of. And you put that ribbon on top of the hat. And just grab the rest of the ribbon and roll it up to put a little ball that goes on top. Nautical theme. Let's glue him to a shell. Alright, tips and tricks. Um, I, you may want to make the head hollow. I didn't feel it was necessary here. In fact, I had to put a dowel rod in it later to help the head stick to the body without falling over. I should like the eyes. Um, you may want to shellac like the eyes to keep the color from bleeding into the other uh, clay on the outside there, the eyelids. I put some blush on using um, pastel, just shave some pastels and use a brush to stick it on there, to blush the cheeks before you bake it. It'll stick better if you put it on before you bake it. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.